Is the focus of the Bible on a suffering Messiah or a ruling Messiah? Which one is it? What do you think, ma'am? Yeah. Well, you read the title right. I think a lot of times we actually get this wrong. So let's clear up some of this confusion right now. So the first picture we see in the Bible of the Messiah is a ruling militant warrior Messiah. Again, this is a real promise in the Old Testament, something we should expect, and we see it promised that God would bring a day called the Day of the Lord. On this day, the Messiah would come as a warrior. He would raise the dead, reward the righteous, and punish the wicked. All the nations would finally serve the God of Israel. He would create new heavens and a new earth filled with righteousness, and then the heavenly kingdom of God would forever be established on the earth. So that's one big hope the scriptures describe. Real things promised that the Messiah would do. But when Jesus came the first time, did he do any of that? Definitely not. Aww. So you can see why Jesus suffering and dying would be confusing for them. What about all the other things he was supposed to do? Even today, many modern day Jews don't believe that Jesus could be their Messiah because he didn't regather the people to Israel. He didn't destroy their enemies and he didn't rule from Jerusalem. So you can see why it's so confusing for them. But what's so interesting is that all of these things that Jesus didn't do yet are things he will do when he returns because his first mission was for something else. Oh! So if Jesus were here today, I think he would tell modern day Jews the same thing he told his disciples. How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? He would show them how he needed to suffer before all the glorious things he would do. Oh! And this is exactly what Paul was preaching. As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. With all of this faith and hope they had in the Messiah ruling, they just didn't understand that he would have to suffer first. So they were believing some things, but not everything. And this is why they didn't understand the mission of the Messiah. But now here's the second picture we see in the Old Testament. We see God promising a Messiah who would do something very different than this ruling Messiah we already talked about. It says that he would be born as a baby to a virgin. He would be hated and rejected. People would look away from him with distaste. He would enter Jerusalem on a baby donkey. Evil doers would encircle him to pierce his hands and feet. Everyone would desert him. He would be pierced, crushed, and wounded for our sins. He would carry our griefs and carry our sorrows. He would suffer for our peace. He would be forsaken. He would pour out his soul to death. But then he would rise. His body wouldn't experience decay. And he would also pour out the gift of his Holy Spirit. So that's another big hope the scriptures describe. Real things promised that the Messiah would do, but obviously a completely different picture, a completely different mission. And when Jesus came the first time, we know that he did each of these things. Yes, he did all of them. And in the church, this is what we focus so much on, how Jesus died on the cross, rose again, gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And those are amazing, amazing things. But remember, these are just some of the things the Messiah would do. Did Jesus raise all the dead the first time he came? Did he make new heavens and a new earth? Did he reward the righteous and punish all the wicked forever? And did he set up his kingdom from Jerusalem? Well, no, he didn't do any of those things. And so you can see that if all we focused on was the first coming, the one mission of the Messiah, we would be misunderstanding God's whole plan, just like the people of Israel were doing. Jesus would have to also tell us how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then he would go on to remind us about everything he will do on the day of the Lord when he comes again. So why did Jesus come the first time? It was to offer God's divine mercy to the world. If he really is going to come on the great and awesome day of the Lord and judge the living and the dead and pour out his wrath on all the wicked, then we are in desperate need of his mercy. The powerful coming of the Messiah will also be a time of great wrath on the earth to punish sin. He won't just set up his kingdom and leave wickedness in the earth. No, he's going to 
punish the world for wickedness. He's going to destroy wicked things, wicked people, so that the world can be righteous again. So he came and offered us mercy for the forgiveness of our sins before that day would come. It's a picture of suffering before glory. Messiah would come once as a suffering, rejected, crushed, grieving Messiah, and then come again as a supreme warrior, ruling leader Messiah. So also Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. It's two different comings and two different missions. Let's not settle for just part of the picture like the Jewish people were doing and like we often do. Let's remember that God is faithful and he will do everything he promised he will do. He provided forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit, yes, and he will provide eternal life on a restored earth in resurrected bodies when he sets up his kingdom and makes new heavens and new earth. He came once to suffer, but he's coming again with the coming glory. What do you think, man? Mm. Yeah. <laughs>